Já está bem, está bem? Só porque isto não estiver bem, tem que se voltar a... Não, não está bem. Não está bem porque está, está a abrir tudo. Não devia estar. Não. Ui! Que horror! Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first uh, welcome meeting of PhD students organized by NEDUC. I would like to thank you all for your presence, and without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Claudia Cavadas, the Vice Rector for Research and our PhD courses, to give the first presentation and open this session. So, Professor. So, oh my God, not doing very well. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you, the organizers, thank you, Luis, and the colleagues that put this in place, this first session. So this was a challenge to start, uh, what should I say about University of Coimbra and to welcome you all, the ones that already are starting now and the ones that are here for a long time, for sure. Uh, so I start maybe to what the University of Coimbra could give you uh, to do, to do a, P, a great PhD uh, program. So this, this was my first motto. I don't know if I can have the time to explain you everything, but I will leave you some details about this. Um, so first of all, I would like to know the audience. It's not a big one, but for sure it's a one that you are committed. Uh, first, I will try to do like this. I don't know if you have time. Uh, to, before starting, if you can use this, then we will uh, to have the who are you, what are you doing here, how long are you here, for that I think it will be interesting to have this, um, let me see if it, I can use it very well. So I'll switch off a little bit this part, so please answer. Everyone has a code. So you can answer all the questions in a row, or just one. If you can, there are three questions. So let me switch first to this. Wait to see your answer, your questions. show you I will try okay great I will hope, I hope that I can show you this never know the world cloud hopefully if not it will be small but anyway I think you can use this so curiosity future Oops, something here. Okay, you can, you can start. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, it's not working very well, but I can, I can share in the end. Maybe I, I will read it for me to be sure who is here, then I will show in the end. Okay, so let me check to know who you are. This is only for me now. So. Or this is not working very well. Okay, so, so why are you doing a PhD? So, knowledge, future, so it was the, your answers. Want to be a researcher, good. Uh, follow academic path, one of your, so I'm reading your, your answers. Research interest. Better prospects, stability, improve knowledge, so knowledge, knowledge, I think it's important. Culture, experience, contribute to science, knowledge, research, 
curiosity. So I think this one is really important. So I think all, you could also answer all these questions. So knowledge, better future, and I think what, nobody answered to this, but have impact. I think impact would be also interesting. So other, so another <coughs> question. So wait, if I can have it here. It's not working very well, my computer. Bad computer. <laughs> so I will read after the, the, the answers. Okay, so with this answer, I think it, I will, I mean the good way to talk with you. I was afraid that you were expecting other things. So, uh, in fact, in terms of, I'm, I'm going to show you some points of research at the University of Coimbra and also some information about the PhD programs and the doctoral schools that we are now uh, building. So that, and I hope that you will be interested in that. So, if we talk about research at University of Coimbra and focus on PhD, PhD programs, so we have 70, 70, oh, 70 PhD programs uh, in 10 faculties, so it's a big amount of, of people, M around, I think, a little bit more than 3,000 students. And of course, we have, we call it one, uh, 80, 1,800 uh, researchers in 38 research centers. So I, I'm putting this together because we want that the PhD students have contact with the scientific environment. This is really very important. So if you don't feel that you are in this environment, so push to find your uh, local to have this environment. And more important, because the PhD programs and you are, you have different environments. So you are one person, you should be at least in a group, contacting at least with your supervisors or supervisor in a scientific group, then a research center, and of course in the PhD program that sometimes links people and students from different, different research centers. So in these 38 research centers, we have all the fields. So that it's a, as a university as we are, we are a comprehensive university, so we have almost all the fields. This is an environment that the PhD students should know from the first day and to uh, to take advantage of this environment. So, as you know, so University of Coimbra is very international and very diverse. So, take advantage of this. So this is the first message. And so, what do you want from the research at the University of, of People? Connecting people. This is very important. There is no way that research could be good or very good or excellent if you are alone. So, this is uh, in terms of personal skills and also to connect with people. Generating <coughs> knowledge, so we want that you generate knowledge. You are the motor, we are very important for the university because you are doing the research. If you don't have, at the University of Queen, if you don't have PhD students, so the research will collapse. So you are really very important and so we have to do the maximum as we can to make you feel comfortable and make you, that you make the difference at University of Coimbra and after, wherever you are, uh, make the difference. And, of course, I think at, uh, at the research level, see, so you are an uh, early researcher career, so you are, are in the, the beginning of your research career. Even if in the end you are not going to be a researcher, so you are identified as an early researcher career person, okay? So, so every time you see something related to, this is for researchers, you, you have to identify yourself doing a PhD that you are a researcher. In beginning, but you are a researcher. Or sometimes in the end, it depends on your, on your part. So this is important. You have to think that we are, you are contributing to understanding the world, so this is very important, and building the future. Even the future could be far away, so your role is really very, very important. So this is the, that the, our focus on why we are doing research, and I think you should also focus this. This, has, this is your role at the University of Coimbra doing your PhD uh, program. So, and of course, we want that the research have 
as impact. I think when we, call, we say research and impact, I think all the people, maybe not all, but all research think of impact factor. Of course, impact factor is interesting. So just to show you that how can you have impact in the impact. So we have academic and scientific impact. This is publications, intellectual property, citation, training. This is, this is in this environment in the university, in research center. But then you can also have impact with your activities or as a PhD uh, student. You could have cultural impact, economic impact, environmental impact. I will read because this is really important. Social impact, health and well-being contributing for, so your thesis could be, could have impact in several impacts that I show you here. Policy influence, legal impact, technological development. So think that your, your work, your daily basis work could have impact. So and this is very important that you elaborate this uh, when you are doing your, your thesis, uh, because this is like you have to have like your pers personal research activities. So uh, this is a long term, but this is important. So in the research, and you as a researcher, you should be a driver to solving global challenges. This is, a, this is maybe difficult, but for sure you could integrate some of these SDGs in your PhD uh, research career and during this even short term at the University of Coimbra. So this is very important and when you are solving your scientific questions, so in your PhD uh, thesis you have a, at least one scientific question that you should be, uh, should be very obvious. Uh, of course, you are contributing to a challenge that in this challenge could not be solved only by you, for sure, not only by your research team that you are integrated, should be, should have a, a this problem should be with different approaches, by approaches by creativity, integrative solutions, and for sure, interdisciplinarity. So this is very important that you start this is difficult when you start a PhD, you are very focused on your scientific questions. This is sometimes, or most of the times, are more no disciplinary. But times to times, you should take a step and look to whom, uh, with whom should I talk to try to have a more broad uh, answer to your questions. So interdisciplinarity is needed. So this is, I'm not going to, to show what is interdisciplinarity, so it's using different disciplines to tackle problems. So you can use methods from another discipline, you can use the questions of another discipline to put in your discipline or in your uh, PhD thesis. So, and I like this one. So how to solve complicated problems. So if we want to change the world, we need to be unrealistic, unreasonable, and impossible. So times to times, not every day, uh, please think broad, think high. Then concentrate in your thesis, but sometimes we have to get out and uh, be integrated in solving problems. Uh, so, um, so at the at the website of the University of Coimbra in research, as you see, so we we'll have a lot of information that you no, sorry, that you should go there times to times because there is information that could be useful for you. News and some resources that are there that you can, uh, can use it. Uh, so, so the question is, uh, what, do, what does you expect that the university offers you? So it depends on the times so you are in the first day, second, first year, second, third or fourth. So we should give you everything you need. So this is important, but sometimes the diversity, the diversity of students, of PhD students is very big. So we have people, uh, we have PhD students from, in terms of age, 23 to 70 years old. People that are enrolling the PhD program 100%, so uh, doing only that. People that are working already and doing and the and why the, the people are doing the students are doing the PhD program? Sometimes is it because of a new career? Others are because they want to know more about something. So 
the, the diversity of PhD students is really very, very big. So that's why what the university can offer you, it depends what do you need. But we have a lot to offer you. So now, um, sorry this is in Portuguese, but anyway, uh, that the, the website's already ready. Some things are still in Portuguese, but you can, for sure, you can read. So we, yesterday we launched the uh, doctoral schools at University of Coimbra. So what we, do you want from this? So uh, the doctoral schools, so we are, there are five. So imagine, so we have 70 PhD programs. So you are allocated to a one PhD program. So this is your identification in the end of your diploma, I don't know how to say it, is we have PhD in blah, 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 your. But I think to try to connect people, trying to have impact, so we have to put people together. And that, so we are trying to organize, so we are, trying, we are now organizing the doctoral schools, thematic uh, uh, doctoral schools that will put PhD students together. So this is like a forum for sharing, crossing practice, so the things that you are doing in your PhD in health science can cross with the PhD in bioscience or in uh, electrical engineering. So it will be important to have this. So they are aligned with strategic areas of, of, of research at the University of Coimbra. So that's why it's a little bit small, but this doctoral, I think the next one, it will be bigger. No, it's not bigger. So it doctoral school is in, um, Climate Energy Mobility, this is one, so the first. Uh, doctoral School in Digital Industry and Health in Space. Doctoral School in Heritage, Culture, and uh, Sociedades Inclusivas, Inclusiveness Society. Yeah. Um, doctoral Schools in ag Agriculture, re Resources, and Environment, and Doctoral School in Health. So what we have done, so we ask the coordinators, in which doctoral schools do you think that your PhD program is more linked? Of course, some of P the PhD programs could be linked in two or three, because it depends on the, so but this is a way to try to organize, okay? So this was the first, uh, the first thing. So try to put some of the PhD programs in these boxes. I don't like, no, it's not good to have boxes, but it's in terms of organization. So, so we, are, we are going to promote modules of the PhD programs, resources, so trying to connect people, uh, sharing the implementation of best, best practice that is working in one PhD program that you could use in the other one. So connecting supervisors, that is very important. The ways of supervising is completely different from different ways, different people. Uh, so these are, and also one very important thing, so we will define ways to, uh, to give support to doctoral students for development of their careers after the doctorate. So we are working on this, I think it's really very important. So what we have to offer to you? So then we do, in the, the, the website, we will, so we will see more information. So we have news, we have conference, we have workshops, uh, events, resources, and development career and mentoring. So these are the, the, the six. And as you can see the, the, the colors, so each doctoral school is identified with a color. When we have all the colors, it means that it's something that could link all the doctoral schools. If we have only one color, it's more, we think it's more uh, for that doctoral school. So let me see, so we, when we'll be in the, in the website, for, for example, health, they are in it, we identified here all, the, here all the PhD programs that are here, okay, the ones there. Then we have opportunities. If you go there, you will see opportunities. If you are well identified in this doctoral school, we will see opportunities for you to be enrolled. So we have conference that sometimes there are several conference that occurs in one PhD program and so we have only 10 students maybe others can also attend so we are going to like to show all the the, the seminars and all the information that will be shared to others so we ask the coordinators what do you want to share with other PhD programs 
So, so that's why we are building this information in this website. And events, this is really very important, it's very in incomplete, so I would like to have the information here, it, I, it was not, I could not get it uh, for this PowerPoint. So this event, so we will have the event for the three minutes thesis competition that we have been doing it the last two years, so it's international competition of communication, of science communication, that the PhD students are asked to tell the PhD uh, thesis in three minutes. So this is very interesting, links people have been working very well, so we will launch again this year. And of course, there will be also, and for sure you are there in that organization, um, PhD uh, programs uh, meetings that are organized by the PhD students. It occurs in several PhD programs. This is, for example, one that is biomedicine and experimental biology. There are others in psychology that if you are not organizing uh, a PhD meeting, please take the lead. You can propose to the coordinator. So maybe you could do a, a, a meeting with all the PhD students from this PhD program. So first, take the lead. You will be the organizers. Ask the coordinator and the director of the, the faculty. More one minute. <laughs> uh, and, and then if you need help, please contact us. So I will, we will help you to organize that. For the first time it will be like, hmm, oh, how should I knock the door to have a, a room or where, so the coffee break. So we'll help you to organize this uh, for your PhD program. I think it's a good way. Uh, so the, the, I, I hope that at least half of the PhD programs will have the PhD program day for each of you. So that connecting people, connecting students from the first year to alumni, people that already finished the PhD and can talk with you, say what you are doing, you should be do this and that. So these are some uh, workshops that we, uh, so they are ready. So we only need the, the, um, the link that you can do the registration. So as I told you, so for example, this one, when you see all the colors, it means that all of the PhD students from different schools could, uh, could make the registration. So it's not linked only for health or for climate or so on. So this is, for example, communication of and in science in academia among peers. So we have already date, 16 to 23 of November, on Tuesday. So we will have the information, I hope, today, uh, more information when we click. Science communication to non-specialist audience. Uh, th that one, I think, it is really very important. How to survive your PhD. So this is like tips that I think we all need. Even if you think that you are surviving, you never know the day after. Uh, <laughs> so art of living uh, management. So this is also very important for, I think, uh, I'm thinking, uh, maybe I will do also this one. Uh, teamwork, uh, of course, as you can see, this can be, you can click and make registration. <coughs> and of course, then we have others that the, the, the um, coordinators send us. So for example, computational biology. So there is some uh, vacancies that people from other PhD programs can, uh, can attend. This is, so the color for health is this blue green. So this is the same. Uh, another one, I put it in, it's not, the, very good. For example, entrepreneurship is another one. Uh, promoting gender equality. So we we'll have this one for all. Uh, this one will be like one per each um, doctoral school. Uh, and now everything you can apply, you can go. This one should be, this in gender equality, uh, should be one that will be like obligatory next year, so, okay, but for now you can check. So I will, I will say that this gender equality in research, uh, you say, okay, the number of women, number of men, even in PhD students we have half, almost half half. So this is not the problems of, of uh, numbers. This is the integration, how can, to see if your research, this research that you are doing is really a uh, good level. Because if you have a biased, in your research, in the way that you are doing research, in the end, 
the result will be, the quality will be very low. There is a lot of examples that, this is not because you are a bad person, you are doing, you don't like men or women, it's not like this. If you cannot put all the, the, the integration of gender inside of your research, in the end it will be no good. This is a, an example, for example, in uh, informatics, uh, of course in health, uh, in also I can have, maybe not all because I, I'm not working on this field, but you can have very good examples that we are biased in our research, okay? So in the end the publication should, so we have a lot of information in our, in our website about, about gender equality in research, so focus on research, they even a checklist when we do your PhD uh, thesis, check if you are if you are having some bias in this. So this is another conference for us. Open science, so very important. So we have to make open science. Science, open science is not only open access for publications. So it's not open, the, so open access for your papers. No, it's open your data, open, of course, the, the, your publications, and open your research, and open your knowledge to the society. So science communication, uh, activities is an open science, it's related to open science. And one, and another one, this is very important, that is internationalization. So you should have always, always uh, an experience, an international experience. Then you ask me, so if you are, you are already international, so I'm having already my international, no, no, it's not enough. You have to visit something, you have to go abroad. And then, but how can I don't have money, I don't have a fellowship. Yes, you have. There, is a, there are a lot of opportunities and the, the, our division of internationalization can give you support. There are a lot of opportunities that you can do an internship, something abroad. So please have this in mind. You have to be international, you have to be global. So uh, then, so I will, so these are the, if you go to research, at the University of Coimbra, so you see all everything. So now we have here that I don't have information still in the website, that's why I didn't put this is resources, the, this first to the, in the middle, and uh, career and development career. So we are starting now to build a career development for the PhD students, okay? So don't ask me all details because we are working on that. So, and we, we this is not a task for one vice rector is a task for different vice rectors because we have to use al alumni, we have to, 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 to use the um, people from the, the outside, from the companies. So this is a, a thing that we have to build together. We are working on that and also applying for funding to have this. So the idea is to have a mentor for you, a match mentor that if you want, this is not uh, people that don't want mentors, mentor for you that can give you some advice. This is not scientific advice, it's, scientific, it's to, if you can do more in your skills and after the, your PhD uh, program, okay? We are, so don't ask me more, Luis, don't ask me more because uh, we are building this. So that's it. I'm sorry if I took too much time. I have much more things to say to you, but we will have time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, this, this has been a long work for uh, Neduk and uh, all our representatives have been following this work on the doctoral schools and, and uh, a compliment to the Vice Rector and uh, its team because we were very annoying, uh, but they always listened and they, have the, did, uh, they did a good job in this and we'll, we'll continue to cooperate. So thank you very much. Now, uh, unfortunately, Professor uh, uh, Christine Alquerque was not, uh, was not able to come. We talked with Prof Professor Claudia and myself. The, the, information, the information will still be provided to you, but she unfortunately had uh, other, other appointments. Now I'd like to invite the student um, Ombudsman. I'm sorry if I didn't say that correctly. Professor Paulo Peixot, <laughs> speak a little. Okay, thank you very much. Works. I hope it works. I 
can speak loudly. Yeah. It won't be a problem. Thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to say you good morning to everyone. It's nice to be here uh, with you and uh, I also like to um, I I was uh, available to accept his invitation from uh, from Neduc because it is important uh, to to for me to speak with you five ten minutes. My name is Paul Paul Peixoto um, and I'm the student on Bunds here at the University of, um, of Coimbra uh, since. May uh, 2019, so I'm the pandemics. Uh, <laughs> I'm the pandemics uh, on wounds of the university, so um, I deal with uh, lots of problems uh, related to the pandemics, but also the normal problems that students face when doing. Uh, 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 um, PhD, uh, a PhD program. It's, uh, as I said, a great pleasure to be here with you. Uh, so I would like to take um, advantage of this NEDUC uh, student welcome session, uh, reception to, to welcome you to the University of, the, of Coimbra, uh, and uh, of course, wish you uh, every uh, every success in the journey that you are starting uh, uh, with us uh, now. Uh, we, uh, we are a heterogeneous community and our PhD students uh, are a very important part of this heterogeneity. I mean in all terms, not in gender terms, but the religious, uh, about, uh, about the food we eat, we are also uh, really challenged as an institution uh, because of that diversity of our PhD students and it, it is an advantage but it is also uh, sometimes a source of, uh, of problems and um, I would say if uh, everything uh, goes very well you will probably uh, never see or hear from me again that's <laughs> that's our collective aim it's if you see me today and uh, you finish your program without see me see me again in that function i i i, I would say uh, but it, it is likely that this can happen of course i hope it, it, it can happen uh, but it is also like uh, th that uh, along you, uh, along the way you may have some problems Okay. It happens in all institutions. It will help. It will happen here, maybe with you, or maybe with you. Uh, uh, we, 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 something that we can cannot say uh, today. But uh, problems of um, an academic nature that that have to do with the, this specific space. We are today. Uh, I mean, with the uh, the relationship with the, the administrative services of the university, this is the main dimension uh, of the, the problems uh, of the um, that uh, PhD students face in the university. The relation uh, and the the, the the obligations that students have in terms of uh, administrative and relationship with the university, this is uh, our main uh, focus uh, uh, of problems. But also problems of uh, pedagogical nature uh, which have to do with the, the relationship uh, uh, with teachers uh, and above all uh, at the given time of the process with uh, uh, thesis supervisors. Okay. So this is also uh, another kind uh, of common, uh, common problem. Also, uh, sometimes financial problems uh, that have to do mainly with the payment, payment of tuition fees. So you have uh, 
to obligations, you have uh, grants from institutions, so sometimes it happens that some problems in this field can also, uh, can also happen. Or finally, uh, a fourth dimension um, is the problems that have to do with the, the university social uh, action namely regarding uh, accommodation, uh, regarding food, uh, regarding all, also social support. I would say, I would say and I, I, I say it because I know very well this kind of, uh, this kind of dimension in all, not, uh, not only the Portuguese universities, but other universities, this is a very important advantage that you have by staying, by studying here at the University of Coimbra, but sometimes it also happened that we can have some problems with this kind of, uh, with this kind of, um, of situations. In all these cases, uh, I want to say to you: in all these cases, when you you face problems in one of these four dimensions, uh, in all these cases, the immediate and appropriate solution. Uh, is try to solve it, uh, uh, to solve the problem with the entity involved uh, in the problem directly, I would say. Uh, it, it could be the course coordinator, uh, it could be the, the faculty services, it could be the service management board, um, it could be uh, your professor, your thesis advisor. Okay? You should try to solve the problem directly with the person or with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the entity uh, involved in the problem. Of course, when the problem remains, um, when uh, uh, you cannot, uh, w w when the problem cannot be solved throughout this initiative, uh, when you think the legitimate um, rights of the students are not respected by the institution or by the program coordinator, uh, you should contact the student ombudsman. So that's the situation to contact the student's ombudsman. You can contact the student's um, ombudsman personally. So I work when you're leaving this door, this building, I work in the next building, the old one on your left, when I'm leaving, so in my left, now on your right. So you can call me by phone. Uh, you can, we can have a Zoom appointment. Uh, we, you can send me an email, so uh, I'll contact you after and uh, I will check with you directly the, how I can help uh, facing the problem that you are, uh, uh, that you are um, experience. So I work at Colégio de São Jerónimo, is the, the building on our uh, left when leaving the, um, this building. Uh, two issues, two, two, two last issues I would like to, uh, to highlight in this welcome session. Um, on one end, it is important, uh, and I should say it now, it is important, uh, it's the importance of preparing uh, yourselves in order to avoid problems. That's the work you need to do uh, during uh, your uh, academic career uh, here at the, um, the university. As you know, as students, as doc doctoral students, uh, you have uh, rights, of course, and you have also that is. So this is a normal institution, <laughs> uh, not a different one uh, in our societies. And these rights, the rights you have, the debt, the debt is you also uh, you also have, uh, are mainly are mainly those uh, written in the academic regulation, the academic regulation of the University of Coimbra. Uh, we call it in Portuguese, RAUC. It's uh, Lamento Académico da Universidade de Coimbra. So you should read this docu document because it's there that you will find 
the rights and the duties that you have here as students. And it is important for you to know the rules, the basic rules, because it's the simple way and the best way to avoid problems. Okay? So read it, please, as soon as you can. So I leave you, that, leave you uh, th uh, this specific uh, suggestion because it is very important. Secondly, uh, as you know, uh, as doctoral students um, and um, our vice-rector, Claudia Cavadas, uh, stressed this point, and uh, I also uh, agree with her. Uh, as you know, uh, as doctoral students, uh, you are now starting out uh, uh, a journey that is a long one. It's a long one. Uh, long and uh, sometimes um, stressful, I would say. Uh, a journey uh, in which uh, half of the time uh, your thesis advisor will be running away from you uh, and uh, in other half of the time you will be running away from your thesis advisor. So, <laughs> this is uh, of course, I'm, uh, it's a caricat caricatural vision, of course, but uh, it's not far from reality. Uh, and, uh, believe me that uh, I did a PhD here at university, <laughs> and I, I know uh, I know the, the situation, uh, this, this situation very well. So, uh, a last, uh, a last. Um, uh, suggestion that I would uh, leave uh, to you, in my opinion, uh, as a student on Bunds, it's um, fundamental that you create a close but a professional relationship with your thesis uh, advisor, uh, not a paternalistic relation in nature, because it could be also a source of problems, but close but professional relationship with your uh, uh, professional um, uh, with your uh, with your scientific advisors it is in my opinion also to uh, stress another uh, thing that our vice rector told to you it is essential um, to you uh, to find uh, the fundamental a fundamental ba balance in your in your lives and uh, with pandemics, it was something that I, I, <laughs> the problems became bigger with pandemics, mental health, stress. So we are, this is in a normal situation, PhD program is, is stress, is, is something that stresses. We have several oc occasions to feel it, but with pandemics is even worse. But you are in an institution and in a city that could help you to integrate in our community. Of course, the students' representative, Luis Coimbra, uh, mainly as the, 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 the person responsible for the representation of students, also can you help you to integrate in the city and the university and uh, to, to, to face a stressful journey, it is important that you uh, open to the find this fundamental balance and uh, can uh, join our uh, community here at the university and here in the city. A final word on the integrity requirements uh, attached to your research and publication work. You have uh, our vice rector show you some <laughs> different, um, different opportunities to you to, to improve this. But as PhD student, uh, uh, you can never claim ignorance uh, of the rules that define a good academic work, a good academic conduct. It's not possible as PhD students. So if you don't have the knowledge you need to do it, try to acquire it, acquire it by attending this kind of uh, the opportunities. This is very important because I work in this field as a researcher on academic integrity and it's even if it won't, it, won't, it won't be the case, it, will, it is not acceptable to, to say, uh, I didn't know the rules, I did it, but 
okay, this is not acceptable, and this is uh, uh, another kind of problems that we have here in the university as in other universities. Be honest and upright in, in, in your work. Leave your mark on the city, leave your mark on the university, uh, and uh, everywhere, you, every time you need to talk to me, feel free to do it. I, I'm, uh, as uh, Obunsman, a very, a very available person, and you can reach me uh, easily, okay? So thank you very much. Have a nice journey. Now, thank you very much, Professor Paulo Peixoto, the students and Budsman. Um, this is a good day. Finally, we managed to organize the students' reception. We <laughs> have been waiting for about a year. Uh, we tried to do this last year, but due to the pandemic, we didn't manage to do so. Um, there's a reason why they are, we chose to do s limited seats, uh, because we are still in pandemic, so here is just a few of you, but I'm very glad that the, the seats that we have are all full. Uh, so thank you very much for coming here today, and thank you uh, to the, the team of the university for broadcasting this live on their uh, YouTube and their platform, so other colleagues that didn't manage to come here can, uh, can attend. First, first, thank you for coming again. Thank you, the Vice Rector, uh, Claudia Cavadas, Students and Budsman, and uh, the team of Students Hub. Here you have a new space for students it was on purpose that we did this here. Uh, the team has helped us uh, very much in organizing this event, so I'd like to thank them too. Uh, and I'd like to thank my team in Edu, because I, I'm not alone, I'm just a face in a very um, um, big team of PhD students from all courses that help me every day. Some of them are themselves representatives in other organisms, and I will talk the, a, a little bit about this. So. Um, why did we do, choose to do this reception? Um, we try to do this reception with a very specific goal. People come here, PhD students, they are kind of lost when they enter the university, and even those that are already here in the university, uh, sometimes they need more information. So we asked um, the, our um, lecturers to come here and speak a few words to give you information, basic information, uh, so, what you expect here in the University of Coimbra. This, um, besides that, we would like to welcome you. This is a, a happy moment. We are starting a new year, a new era, I would, I would say, because hopefully COVID is ending, so now we are in a new phase, uh, and uh, I, we would like to, like, they, they mark this as, a, as a, a stepping stone to the next and to the future here in our, in our university. So, what is uh, NEDUC? NEDUC is, very, <laughs> is many things, um, but in the, their, its more simplistic form is basically um, a group of PhD students that informally cooperate to defend our interests, to participate, to realize events, we have representatives from the General Council. That's myself. I'm the only representative of PhD students in the General Council, and by definition, the only f that represents uh, directly and democratically all students in the university. Um, but we have more. But besides, what, what is the General Council? Uh, it's, a, it's, the, it's the council that oversees most of the activity here in the university. It elects the rector, it uh, supervises uh, accounts, activities, has 35 members, uh, 18 researchers and professors, uh, two uh, non-professor uh, non uh, workers, uh, five students, one is a PhD student, and 10 elements from society that are chosen to come to the council. We have more um, organisms that have PhD students, namely the Senate. 
The Senate has representatives, one for each faculty. We called it, um, I'm sorry, I <laughs> forgot to translate it. It's usually faculties, um, unidades organicas, organic units. So uh, two of them are PhD students and, are, and cooperate daily with, with NEDUC, the representative for Colegio das Artes, the Arts College, and from Tresis is also the, a PhD student. So we try to cooperate daily and try to, in each their specific actuations, to share experiences so that we can represent you better. We have more organisms this time in faculties like students, uh, the, the, fac the faculty assemblies and the pedagogic councils that usually have one or more PhD students mm -hmm. that also in their own ways uh, represent our interests and try to defend and try to intervene, uh, develop new policies and things like that. So why did we create NEDUC? So we needed to communicate. NEDUC was founded in 2016, so up to the fifth birthday this year. Uh, we had a problem because we are closed in our labs, in our offices, in our homes, and we didn't talk with each other. So it was very hard to share experiences and to share information between one another. So we basically used the, 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 the candidacy for the general council's representative for PhD students, and we tried, why not create a group? Uh, more or less with one representative or one colleague from each doctoral program and let's talk with each other, see what's, what are the main problems and try to create, collusion, create solutions. So that's how NEDUC was born. Today we have about 50 members that cooperate more or less in a daily basis. One, there are people that cooperate more, the others less depending on their time because PhD students are by definition very, uh, they have a very strict schedule. Uh, besides this, this activity, we also organize events such as this, but we organized other events such as a mental health um, event in 2019. Uh, the professor Ombudsman was also there, and Professor Claudia uh, was also invited. Um, and we organized other events um, like the plenary <laughs> meetings that today in the afternoon we'll have, and much, many, 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 many more, we hope. Um, and this is all with the same baseline, to defend the interests of PhD students. Uh, NEDUC has grown, and I, th I hope that we grow even more with your help, and we are here to, to solve your problems, in cooperation, of course, with the university's entities that always have been a friend to NEDUC. I cannot complain in my term to, ne to not being listened to, uh, so thank you very much. But this is not the only structure that I want to talk to you about. There are other student structures, not exclusive to PhD students, but I would like to, to call out to them, such as the main one here in Coimbra, you, I think you, most of you may know, the Academic Association of Coimbra. It has 134 years, and it's very ancient, but it's not good because it's ancient. It's ancient because it is good. So this, this uh, academic association has a bunch of activities. They have many colleagues. Usually they are younger colleagues, they're not many PhDs, but sometimes, mainly in cultural and sports activities, we have many colleagues uh, that are taking their PhDs and doing this as extracurricular activities. Uh, so I invite you to go. They are located near Praça da República. I think if you, you can enter almost any time. Um, and uh, explore the, the, offer, the offers that they, ha they have for you. Uh, in, uh, you all, all, all of you have received a card online. People who follow us, uh, follow us on our social media will have the information for like a base guide that you have some, some information about these entities so they can you research for yourself and you find information for yourself. But I'd like to, to point this. Um, besides the academic association, other spontaneous uh, uh, organisms exist, mainly related to culture, like choirs, theatres, arts, sciences. So explore our structures. Here in Coimbra we are a city of students, it's not by chance. Um, we have many um, organisms that can help you, uh, even for mental health. One, one, thing, one thing that we found out when we did the event of mental health 
is people that are lonely, mainly international students that don't have a basis of support. When they do an extracurricular activity, they find friends, they find a purpose besides just sitting on, your, on our office 10 or more hours a day, if it's a good day, like you all know. Um, just doing your PhD, just try to relax sometimes. Um, we also have in Casa de Lusofonia International Students Association and there are several from different nationalities. They have uh, their own organizations. Uh, search for yourself what, are the, what is the organization that's more um, useful to you. We have cooperated with several of them, namely APEB, the Associação de Pesquisadores e Estudantes Brasileiros. Uh, it has been also a good friend of, of NEDUC. And we also have junior enterprises and other, other organisms that we can, you can also explore. So all of this, what have we done? What are we doing? Uh, we have been seeking to basically solve your problems. <laughs> we, are, uh, we talked about housing. We meet with the universities and uh, other entities about what food you have daily basis. If you want a canteen, it's good quality, is, is it not? Uh, what kind of support do you have from university and other entities? Now, one, one, one example is the emergency fund called Fundo de Apoio Social, that is provided by the Serviços da Ação Social, the social services of the university, and if you, 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 you have this service if you want to. There are other entities like Instituto Justiça e Paz that also provide aid to students that, that need them. Uh, here in university, also from the social services, you have health services uh, that would like to point out to the mental health social uh, services. You have psychiatrists and psychologists. Here in this building, you just go up to, to the next floor, actually, sorry, uh, two floors up, <laughs> and you can, can have medical services from a range of specialties provided by the university through the social services. Also, we, one of our main focus is also to intervene at the level of scholarships, grants, and help you deal with the bureaucracy that unfolds. Uh, many international students have been uh, having problems with uh, recognition from foreign degrees. They, they don't have, don't have the, a degree from the European Union, so they need to, the, uh, to do a recognition, so to, to apply to grants in our country. We try to help also get funding, cooperating with the doctoral schools that also help you um, do your own uh, projects, try your own funding, and of course developing your own careers. This is one of our main focus because some years ago we had the most of our PhD students were already in academic careers. Today that's not true. We have almost, almost 300 new students that um, are doctors each year, so they need to go somewhere and we are trying to focus and the university already is developing interesting policies in that regard. And one of our main uh, time consuming activities is to help you navigate through all bureaucracy within and within university and outside. So deadlines, what are your duties, what are the rules, how can we help you, for example, when there are issues with your supervisors uh, or when you, they have issues to get a supervisor, even, even that. Uh, what kind of subjects do you have, uh, delivering exams, or, uh, assignments, all of that we try to help, not only by myself, but having Neduk, having a people, a person in each course at, at least, so they can know we solve a problem so that the next generations will not have the same problem. So this is what we are, this is what we do, this is what exists for you here in university and here in Coimbra. I would like to invite you to participate in the most that you can. Enjoy your stay here, enjoy your PhD. Uh, as I, one of my favorite books uh, states in the, the cover, don't panic. I think you know that book, so, some of you. Um, so don't panic. Uh, very welcome to the University of Coimbra. Um, much luck to you. If you need anything, I'm here, our friends are here, and the university 
uh, organisms are also here to help you. Um, so that was my, my intervention. The day will be long. I would like, uh, unfortunately, the rector was not unable to come. He just sent me a text. So I'd like to ask Professor Claudia to give the closing, closing speech. And then we will go to the next room and continue our activities in a more informal matter, manner. But stay, <laughs> please stay. And I would like to invest, uh, ask Professor Claudia to end this session. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you, Luis, for in fact, Luis already said all the things that we, we should say. So uh, keep doing your work, keep doing, uh, doing the difference in the University of Coimbra. We count on you all that are here and uh, in YouTube, everywhere, to uh, contribute to, to the research at the University of Coimbra and to make the world different. So you're, you're, you are very important at university. So please also contact us, the university, to challenge us. What should we do more? And use university as a great place to do network and to change the world. Thank you so much for being with us. So we are now finished. Uh, I will ask you just who didn't get our